Youth alive! Somebody that is happy to see the second day, lift up your voice, lift up your hands, and begin to give glory to God. He has made it possible for us and for all the diverse encounters that was made available to us on the first day upon this mountain. Everyone, everywhere, lift your voice of thanksgiving, lift up your voice of praise, and begin to give glory to God. Give Him all the praise, give Him all the worship, celebrate Him. Him, magnify him he has done us well he has brought us into his presence even on this second day and he has promised us that on the second day he will revive us somebody give him praise are you glorifying him he's indeed a good god never failing never changing never disappointing lord we give you glory are there worshipers in the house this morning lift up your loud voice and give glory to this god father we say thank you. We give you the praise and glory. Thank you for all of the diverse encounters you have made available to us upon this mountain of renewal. We give you praise and glory. Is somebody thanking the Lord? Give him all the praise. Give him all the glory. We magnify you because indeed you are a faithful God. Lord, we give you glory for the diverse encounters you have made available to us upon this mountain of renewal. Somebody have encountered a testimony, celebrate him. He's indeed a good God for all the renewal testimonies he has caused you and I to encounter upon this mountain. No assumption. Celebrate him. Now begin to ask him Lord on this second day visit me with revival encounters upon this mountain. I'm not returning the same way I came. I must be revived upon this mountain. Lord I'm not returning the same way I've come. Upon this mountain this second day it is my day. It is my day. Is somebody declaring that the hand of the Lord shall be mighty upon you and I on this second day. Father, visit us again. Father, visit us again. Father, visit us again on this second day. Lord, let there be diverse revival encounters for every youth upon this mountain. Lord, do it to us and take all the praise. You can lift up your voice, everybody. Lift up your hands and begin to wave it to God. Give him all the praise because he has assured us of a visitation upon the second day. You can wave your hands every youth in the house and give him all the praise. Give him all the glory. Father will say thank you. Be thou glorified. In Jesus mighty name we have given thanks. Let your amen be that of a youth this morning. I know the Lord has visited you upon this mountain. Pastors are waiting for you at the honor entrance. That is the entrance behind you where the pastors are seated. Go there and document the testimony. And you have the privilege to share it in the course of this service. If there are you here, lift a voice. Make a loud shout of Hosanna to Jesus. And a clap of free to him as you receive the Levites to take us in praise. Thank you, Jesus. You deserve the glory and the honor. As I lift my hands in worship and I bless your holy name, because you deserve the glory. Yes, Jesus. And the honor. As I lift my hands in worship And I bless your holy name Cause you are great And do miracles so great There is no one else, no one else like you Cause I've searched all over the depths and the heights And there is no one else like you God Cause you are great Yes Jesus And do miracles, miracles, miracles so great Cause there is no one else like you Oh cry There is no Lift up sons of Jesus with you are great Any 
the enemy this morning. Let's say Jesus sets my feet upon the solid rock. Upon the solid rock. Lift us up. I feel like dancing. Let me see you give Jesus a dance. Let me see you give Jesus a dance. Let's say, I feel like dancing. What are you doing? Oh yeah, what are you doing? I say, I feel like dancing. Who dance again? Say, I, I, I. Oh yeah, I, I, I. Let me see what I. Oh yeah, I, I, I. Oh yeah, I, I, I. I come on for Jesus. I come on for Jesus. Oh yeah, I, I, I. Lift up some shit. I've got joy, joy. We know God has visited you on this mountain. You have a testimony, please. Kindly go to the entrance behind me, the honor entrance, and document your testimonies. Praise the Lord. Surely again, we'll be upstanding on our feet to pray. We say, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the release of diverse encounters at this ongoing year 2024 via your word and special ministrations. The Bible speaking in the book of Psalms 118 verse 23. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. With his understanding, please rise with me on your feet as we lift up our voices. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the release of diverse encounters at this ongoing year 2024. Via your word and special administrations, lift your voice, children of God, and give God thanks for the release of diverse encounters at this ongoing year, 2024, 
via his word and special administration. Father, we say thank you. Jehovah, we have come to give you all the praise and glory. Father, we say thank you for the release of diverse encounters at this ongoing year 2024 via your word and special administration. Jehovah, we bless your name. Jehovah, we say thank you for the release of diverse encounters at this ongoing year 2024 via your word and special administrations. Jesus, we say thank you. Jesus, we give you praise. Jesus, we honor you. Father, we say thank you for diverse encounters, for the release of diverse encounters at this ongoing year 2024. Our God, via your word and special administration. Father, we say thank you for release of encounters. Father, we say thank you for release of diverse encounters. Jehovah, we have come to say thank you for the release of diverse encounters at this ongoing year 2024. Lord, we honor you. Jehovah will bless your name. Thank you, Jesus, for the release of diverse encounters at this ongoing year 2024 via your word and special administrations. Jesus, we say thank you. Thank you for the release of diverse encounters at this ongoing year 2024 via your world and special administration. Lift your voices and say, Father, we say thank you for the release of diverse encounters at this ongoing year 2024 via your world and special administration. Jehovah, we have come to say blessed be your name, Jesus, for the release of diverse encounters at this ongoing year 2024 via your word and special administrations. Father, we say thank you for the release of diverse encounters, for the release of diverse encounters at this ongoing year 2024 via your word and special administration. Father, thank you. Father, we give you praise. Jesus, we honor you. Jesus, we give you praise. Thank you for the release of diverse encounters. Oh God, at this ongoing going year 2024 via your word and special administration thank you for diverse encounters thank you for diverse encounters by the instrumentality of your world jehovah we say thank you we give you praise we honor you jesus thank you for the release of diverse encounters at this ongoing year 2024 via your word and special administration Jehovah, we bless your name. Jesus, we say thank you for the release of diverse encounters at this ongoing year 2024 via your word and special administration. Mighty God, we honor you. Jehovah, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, O God. Wave those hands to Jesus and give him praise. Father, we bless your name. For in Jesus' gracious name, we have given thanks. Put your hands together for Jesus and be seated. Youth alive, shortly we shall be praying again. This time we shall be saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, upon this mountain of Aiak 2024, let the refining fire of the Holy Ghost burn off every chaff of sin in the lives of every youth of this commission, thereby making our service acceptable unto God in Jesus' name. Malachi chapter 3, verse 2 to 3. He says, but who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he, like a refiner's fire, and like fullest up, and he shall sit as a refiner, and purify out silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and pour them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord, and offer in righteousness. Would you like to pray that prayer with me? Jump up on your feet, and begin to declare, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, upon this mountain of Ai, 2024, let the refining fire of the Holy Ghost burn off every chaff of sin in the lives of every youth of this commission, thereby making our service acceptable unto the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, in the name of Jesus, upon this mountain of Aiak 2024, let the refining fire of the Holy Ghost burn off every chaff of sin in the lives of every youth of this commission thereby making a 
your service acceptable unto God in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, upon this mountain of Aiach 2024, let the refining fire of the Holy Ghost burn off every chaff of sin in the lives of every youth of this commission, thereby making my service acceptable unto God in the name of Jesus Christ. I say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, on this mountain of Aya 2024, let the refining fire of the Holy Ghost burn off every chaff of sin in the lives of every youth of this commission, thereby making my service acceptable unto God in the name of Jesus Christ. My Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, upon this mountain of Aiach 2024, let the refining fire of the Holy Ghost burn off every chaff of sin in the lives of every youth of this commission, thereby making my service acceptable unto God. Our Lord, we pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, upon this mountain of Aiach 2024, let the refining fire of the Holy Ghost burn off every chaff of sin in the lives of every youth of this commission, thereby making my service acceptable unto God in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, upon this mountain of Aiach 2024, let the refining fire of the Holy Ghost burn off every chaff of sin in the lives of every youth of this commission, thereby making our service acceptable unto God. Lord, we have no one to turn to except you. Let the refining fire of the Holy Ghost burn off every chaff of sin in our lives as a youth in this commission, thereby making our service acceptable unto God. If you are confident that the Lord has answered your prayers, lift up your hands, begin to give him the glory because he has caused the power of the Holy Ghost to destroy every chaff of sin in your life. Give him the glory and praise. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' glorious name, we have prayed. Give God a big, big, big hand and please be seated. Eac 2024. Renewal. Come on, make that more youthful. Eac 2024. Renewal. Well, welcome to the second day of Eac 2024. And I have no doubt in my heart that today shall be a day of revival for someone here. If that is you, your amen will be stronger and better. Our running text for this conference has been Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Our mother in the faith speaking to us yesterday mentioned amongst others that one ensure upon this mountain to be renewed number two she said do not only be renewed be transformed be changed and then she also mentioned that having been changed upon this mountain go out there and effect a change so amongst others, we are upon this mountain not only to be renewed and to be transformed, but also to be released as agents of change. 
to be released as agents of transformation. But here it is. Only men and women who are changed can change their world. Only those who are transformed can transform their world. Over and over again we have been told since this conference began that the word of God is God's instrument for our change. Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18 we all with open face, beholding as in the glass the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. But notice, only those who open their hearts to receive the word are changed by the word. Only those who open their hearts to receive the word are transformed by the word. He therefore beholds on you and I upon this mountain to open our hearts to receive the word. It is the word that enters inside of us, that lights us up, that illuminates our mind and steers up the renewal and the transformation that we are here to receive upon this mountain. He sent a word into Jacob as the word entered into him. That word lighted upon Israel. It is the word that you receive and believe that transforms you. The word of the Lord will be coming to us again today in torrents. Open up your hearts. Receive the word. Open up your hearts to receive the word. And I pray for someone here today that in the name of Jesus there shall be no distraction around you. Therefore be very personal. Be very personal. Be very personal. In the words of his servants, our father in the faith, God visits individuals, not groups. God transforms individuals, not groups. Be very personal. Stay focused. It is personal light for personal flight. Every man needs his own light. You can't ride on the wings of someone there is no bed that toes another in the air. Every bed needs its own wings to fly. If you are going to live here transformed, if you are going to live here as an agent of change that the world is in dire need of, you must be personal. And so I like for you this morning, in your seated position, you are going to demand of the Lord, Jesus, help me today to stay focused. Help me today to be very personal. Rise up on your feet, everyone, everywhere. Raise your voice. Jesus, help me to be focused. Help me to be personal. I must return from here with my own personal encounter, with my own personal word of change, with my own personal word of transformation. I receive the grace required to stay focused to the end. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we are free. Let's put our hands together as we receive the Levites to lead us further in praise. Make that clap bigger and better for Jesus. The all-sufficient God Sufficient God, hey, Akbonu Reo, Akbonu Rega, Jehovah, the all sufficient God, oh, Akbonu hey, Akbonu Rega, oh, Jehovah, Jesus, she over overdue.
Lift our hands to heaven again this morning and bless the name of the Lord. Somebody offer some praise unto God this morning. Is worthy of our praise. Is worthy of our thanksgiving. Somebody express your gratitude. Since you came, God has been speaking. God has been transforming lives. God has been renewing us. It deserves some thanks this morning. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory and the praise. We are excited again to be in your presence this morning. We thank you for all that you have been doing since we came on this mountain. We thank you for what you are said again to do today. For the light of the word that came yesterday was somebody want to thank God again. Thank him personally for the word that came to you personally. Father, I thank you for the word that came to me yesterday. The me that came is not the me that is standing now. Something has begun to happen. And I know something will continue to happen even to me today. Lord Jesus, I'm grateful. I am grateful. And I thank you. Would you like to express your desire again this morning for the word that is coming today? Lord, let your word come to me again today. Jesus, I am here for your word. The Lord sent a word into Jacob and it lighted upon Israel. Jesus, send a word of renewal to me today. Let this be my day. Beginning from this first word, Jesus, let my ear hear you. Let my heart receive your word. And let a transformation take place in my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your holy name. 
In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Our Father, we thank you because we know you are here already. Thank you for what you have started doing and you have continued doing and you will do now. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus. We thank you because everyone shall be renewed in the name of Jesus. And we shall all return that transformed in the name of Jesus Christ. Take all the glory in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. And all the people of God say loud, Amen. amen. And all the youth in the house shout a youth for Amen. amen. Please give Jesus a big hand of praise and be seated. Hallelujah. This morning, I'd like to appreciate God the Almighty for the privilege to stand before us to bring us the first word in this second day of AYAC 2024. I'd like also to appreciate my father, our father, the apostle over this commission, for giving me this opportunity or privilege to bring us this word. I appreciate the servant of God, our resident pastor, and the national youth pastor also in the house this morning. Shall we give Jesus a big hand of praise? For the time we have this morning, we are going to be looking at the subject, the force of conscience. The force of conscience. The place of conscience occupies a major role in the life and journey of the believer. No one can make the most of his or a Christian adventure without proper functional conscience. And this is why it becomes critical to look at this subject in this season of renewal. Because without a healthy and functional conscience, destiny is bound to crash. But no one's destiny here will crash in the name of Jesus Christ. The security of your journey and my journey as a Christian lies in the state of our conscience. Whether we succeed or we fail in our journey is determined by the state of our conscience. Now, fortunately, we live at a time in the world where conscience has become endangered. Men and women walk in the street with no conscience. And this has brought a lot of trouble to the world and also to individuals themselves. But in the name of Jesus upon this mountain, as God renews our conscience, we are going to make it in our journey of destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. So we therefore need a renewal and repositioning to stand the chance in this generation. Somebody may ask me, what is conscience? And we try to look at quick definitions this morning as it applies to our context. Number one, conscience is the spirit of life that indwells our mind. The spirit of life that indwells our mind. Remember, man is a triune being according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. He has, or is a spirit who has a soul and lives in the body. Now, God has put conscience with a man to guide him in his journey of life. So, it's the spirit of life that it dwells our mind. It is the voice of God inside us. It warns us against 
impend the dangers. It provides a check within our spirit. It reacts within us whenever we are taking a wrong step or doing something wrong. Conscience will react. The conscience in us will prick us. It brings us constant checks so that we don't crash whether in decision making or in our general work with God. Conscience is always present with us. That's why it's within us. Goes with us anywhere we go. And just like someone said, like our shadow, it follows us everywhere. It is called the police of our destiny that God has placed within us so that we can make the most of our journey. Now, may I say that every mortal man has a conscience. However, due to the Adamic nature, the conscience in man, in the mortal man, is dead. Why? Because after God had made man in his own image, put a conscience within him, the man fell lost the nature of God, the spirit of God, the man had left. Man was left to himself. And of course, at that point, man lost sense of morality and justice. Evil became normal to man. Man could no longer determine what is good or bad or wrong. Man began living carelessly. Enjoys doing evil. Thinks evil. Repay evil for evil. There was no more conscience. Someone like Cain could wake up one morning and for no reason get angry with his brother and kill him. For no offense to him. Conscience was dead. And so when a man is yet to be regenerated, is operating at that level. But good news, at redemption, the spirit of life came back to man. The spirit of life is restored back to the dead mind of man. Bringing man's conscience back to life. According to Romans chapter 8. If you read from verse 1 and 2. It said therefore. There is therefore now no condemnation. To them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh. But after the spirit. Now verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life. In Christ Jesus. Hath made me free. From the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life came back to us, prompting our hearts to good behavior, to good character, so that we can make the most of our journey. And that is why man's transformation is rooted in the renewal of his mind. And the renewal of his mind like we are doing. Romans 12, 2. When the mind is renewed, then the, the transformation that makes man that live the way God wants him to live uh, takes place. So we see conscience in that context as the spirit of life that indwells our mind. And number two, what is conscience? Conscience cannot be defined as the invisible you that determines the destiny of the visible you. The invisible you that determines the destiny of the visible you. You can't see it, but it imparts immensely 
on the direction of your life. You can see it. It's somewhere inside, but it affects who you become by your relationship with him. So when conscience is alive, you can be sure to enjoy a good ride in life. The idea, one's conscience, the higher he flies in life. Very important because it's there as a check. Our father in the faith always makes this analogy whenever he talks about conscience, relating it to the alarm, the seatbelt alarm in the car. That when you enter a car, start the ignition, and you put in drive. If you have not engaged your seatbelt, then you start hearing the warning sound. Tom, tom, tom. And if you drive, that sound will continue at the that same frequency. Telling you you have forgotten something that may be danger ahead. You need to fix your seatbelt. If you ignore it, it keeps going. And then if you keep ignoring it, it goes at a fast pace to tell you that you are now on your own. Whatever happens, I've left you. It's there to protect us. Quickly this morning, what are the types of conscience that we have? We can identify four quickly from the scriptures. Number one, dead conscience. Dead conscience. This is a conscience of one that is not regenerated. Otherwise, it is the conscience that also emerges when evil has had its way to the point that the conscience has become dead. Someone has exposed themselves to evil so much that nothing is warning him against anything anymore. Every evil becomes normal. Doing evil becomes normal. But no one of us will get to that point in the name of Jesus Christ. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2, we see this described by Paul the Apostle. He says, speaking lies in hypocrisy. That is somebody speaking lie and is doing it so well, pretending as if it's true. He has become a master of speaking lies. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Conscience, like the heart, is flesh. If you put a flesh on any hot object, you kill the cells. That's why conscience seared with hot iron is termed to be conscience dead. So many whose conscience have died resulted from ignoring continually the one signals of their conscience and so they are left to the evil they want to do. Number two, we have defiled conscience. That is polluted conscience. Conscience that has been virused. The system is on, but there are viruses inside. So it cannot function properly. Misjudge things. Misinterpret things. So in Titus chapter 1, and verse 15, Paul also was, I mean, describing here, he said, unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, is nothing pure. 
This is the conscience uh, that is in the defiled. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. So when you find a carnal man, a carnal believer, who is defied in his ways, his conscience also gets defied along. Everything is misjudged. If he hears a testimony, it's lie. It can't be true. Because it's not pure. So everything to him is not pure. Oh, somebody claims to have testimony of righteousness. He says, no, it can't be true. In this world, everybody's committed sin. Why? Because he's defiled. So his conscience is defiled. But the fact that is doing it or you are doing it does not mean everybody is doing it. It is a function of the state of your conscience. So when you begin to see things that are righteous, are good, in another perspective, check yourself. Your conscience may be defiled. Number three, we have weak conscience. This is a conscience that falls for anything around. First, Corinthians chapter 8 verse 12 this is the conscience of a young believer Bible says uh, their conscience is weak and so we should not sin against the brethren and wound their weak conscience if you do that you are sinning against Christ so there are people who are not yet strong there are certain things you do to them that affect them. There are lifestyles we live that injust them. There are places we go and when they see us, oh, you mean Sister James, I mean Sister Janet also comes here. Oh, you mean Brother John goes to that place and then we injure their conscience because it's weak. And number four, we have what we call the good conscience which is what God demands of every one of us. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 19. It's a holding faith. And a good conscience. Good conscience which some have put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. Without a good conscience, shipwreck is inevitable. That is destruction is inevitable. So, all of this helps us to identify different types of conscience that we have. Now the question is, what type of conscience guarantees a glorious future? From all that we have said, it is good conscience. It's very important. We all need it to fulfill destiny. We need it to emerge giants in our generation. We need it because a good conscience will facilitate the quality of our work with God. A good conscience affects our relationship with the word of God. How we relate with the world. A good conscience will help our obedience to the world. Our obedience to his commandment. A good conscience. It will help in our relationship with humanity, with other brethren, just like we read in that scripture. When good conscience is there, then Christianity becomes beautiful. The reason why today the beauty of Christianity seems to be lost in many quarters is because Christians themselves have lost their good conscience. Everybody lives carelessly. Everybody does the same thing. And so, nobody knows who is a believer anymore. But in the name of Jesus, from this conference, that story is changing with you and I. Now, somebody may ask me, how do I know good conscience? Quickly, proofs of good conscience. 
Let's look at three of them quickly this morning. Number one, godly sincerity demonstrated in your day-to-day walk proves of a good conscience. Number one, godly sincerity demonstrated in your day-to-day walk. By godly sincerity, we mean truthfulness. Living truthfully. Trustworthiness. The word sincere means to be free from deceit. To be free from hypocrisy. Lies. So, where good conscience is, Godly sincerity is. Second Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 12. Hear what Paul the Apostle said here. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you all. Look at this. The testimony of our conscience. That is the greatest testimony of any believer. The testimony of your conscience is your greatest testimony. You know why? Because nobody sees your conscience. What you said is what we know. What you did, only you know. What you portray is what everybody sees. But who you truly are in the secret, only you know. That is why the testimony of your conscience is your strongest testimony. Oh, thank God for healing. Oh, thank God for breakthroughs. But the question is, how did they come by? Can you say that you have lived in godly sincerity with people around you or dealt in godly sincerity in your businesses, your career as a student? Oh, yes, you are passing. But are you sure you are doing that without any other trick like cheating so our day to day lifestyle shows our state of conscience 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 read verse 1 to 2 also buttressing the same point therefore seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy within none then hear what the testimony of Paul said but we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty so are you dishonest and doing that secretly ask yourself because it's very important we have renounced the hidden thing of dishonesty let's read that scripture not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully but by manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God today Lies are everywhere. Probity is gone. Honesty is lost. The church is floating like the world. But beginning with you and I, there will be a change from this conference. It pains my heart personally when I hear certain things being done by believers. And I begin to wonder, is this person born again? But everybody claims to be saved. Many times I will even hear people you never imagine, including even pastors. And then I ask myself, and can that person go to bed? How do you sleep? We need to get to that point again. Where our conscience will keep us accountable. We need to get to that point again where our lifestyle 
will be such that we ourselves can boldly say the testimony of our conscience is that of sincerity. Number two is living honestly. Just the same way. Make your life honest. Let your ye be ye, nay be nay. Let your dealings be right. That is how to prove your conscience. Do you enjoy falsehood? Then good conscience is lacking. Please check it. Very important. And number three, proofs of good conscience. Number three, refusing to be a partaker of the unfruitful works of darkness. This is very critical. We must refuse to be a partaker of the unfruitful works of darkness. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 11 says we should have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Ask yourself, very simple question, do I love what people do in darkness? Do I enjoy secretly activities performed in darkness? You know them. If you do, then your conscience is already challenged. Do you reprove them or you approve of them? We are talking about sin. Do you flow with it? Do you describe it as acceptable? Because today, things that are frowned at before now are acceptable. Somebody dresses naked and somebody else says that's fashion. That's not acceptable because it doesn't give glory to God. See men piercing their bodies like women. Turning themselves to women and then somebody says that is acceptable. No. Where is our conscience? Where is our conscience? Someone involved in cheating and fraudulent activities. Somebody calls that smartness. That's not smart. That's evil. So, you know your conscience is good if you reprove the unfruitful works of darkness or you approve of them. In the word of God's servant, Bishop, uh, Bishop Abioye, if you don't refuse the works of of fruitful works of righteousness, you will soon infuse with them. If you don't reprove them, you will approve of them. In First Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Refuse profane and old wife's fable. Refuse them. Refuse them. Please take note that everyone will give account of his activities by himself unto God. Romans 14:12. And if only in this world we have hope, we have most of all men miserable. We must know that we are going to render account when we get to heaven. First Corinthians 15, 19. So First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through to 17 makes it clear what to do, our approach. And God had will raise First Corinthians chapter 6, 14. Please. Go to verse 15. was talking about what first Corinthians no now please read second Corinthians 6 second Corinthians 6 and now we read verse 14 be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship at righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion at light with darkness this is what God wants of us verse 15 And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has the believer with an infidel? Now 16. We are reading to 17. And what agreement at the temple of God with idols? 
for ye are the temple of the living God, as God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And now, verse 17, wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Come out from them. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Proverbs 1.10. That is how to demonstrate our good conscience. As we close this morning, how do I build a good conscience? Number one, true spiritual exercises. We exercise ourselves. Please take note that in living with a good conscience, men may mock you. The path may look like lonely. People may think you are old school or a cake or not in, I mean, or fashion or in vogue. But we must understand that this is a demand for the preservation of our destiny. Someone like Daniel may think good conscience, no fault, innocence was found in him. According to Daniel chapter 6 and verse 5 to 10, they came up against him. They ganged up against him. They were looking for fault against him. They couldn't find anyone. And they found him. And they had to use the law of his God against him. But the more they did, the better he became. And at the end, he was promoted and elevated. Just like somebody here who would choose righteousness will be promoted and elevated. So, we exercise ourselves unto righteousness. Unto good conscience. Acts chapter 24 verse 16. Paul said, here do I exercise myself to always have a conscience void of offense towards God and man. You are exercising yourself. R refuse to do wrong. Choose to do right. If you keep choosing to do the right thing, you will soon become you know, strong enough that those things will not appeal to you anymore. There are people who will not lie for anything. There are people who will not steal for anything. There are people who will not commit any form of immorality for anything. Why? They have exercised themselves to that point. Number two, through the blood of Christ that purges. We engage the blood of Christ that purges. In Hebrews chapter 9, 13 and 14, clearly there, we see there that if the blood of Apha, he said, for the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of Apha, sprinkled it unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. Now verse 14, let's read together. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot or to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Well, my prayer this morning is that everyone's conscience will be revived. Everyone's conscience will be renewed. Where you are seated, would you like to pray, Lord, I surrender my conscience to you. Purge my conscience. Renew my conscience. Let the blood of Jesus purge me clean. Let the blood of Jesus wash my conscience this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' precious name. Somebody celebrate Jesus is worthy. If you have been renewed and repositioned by that word, give Jesus a big, big hand once again. Hallelujah. It is testimony time. Help me tell your neighbor my breakthrough time. Let the following youths please rush to the altar for their testimony. Jonathan, Jason, Darasimi, Uluwa, Damilola. Let's put our hands together for them. Otaru, David. Otaro David, divine in the obots. The louder you clap, the faster they come. Let's keep clapping, let's keep clapping. Divine in the obots. Otaro David, Jonathan, Jason, Darasimi, Oluwa, Damilola. While we await the arrival, let's quickly take one of the documented testimonies here. Hallelujah. Delivered from a terrorist attack. I give thanks to God of this great commission who have delivered me from the death during a terrorist attack in my place of work. Two years ago, I was transferred to Niagoloko, a town located on the border of Cote d'Ivoire, as part of my service. On Friday, April 7, 2023, 
Harmed individuals invaded the compound of our place of work and opened fire in all directions. It was general panic. People were running in all directions. I wanted to run away, but then I said to myself that my case is different because I'm a child of God. I can't die like an ordinary man. The Holy Spirit instructed me to go into a particular office and sit down, and he clearly indicated where I should sit. A few moments later, the terrorists entered the office and started shooting in all directions. They came past the office where I was sitting without even noticing me. They took away a lot of materials and burned some documents. You can keep clapping, you can keep clapping. I had a book of Bishop David Oedepo, Exploits of Faith, on my table. They picked all, all the documents, all of the documents, to burn them without touching the book of Bishop. I return all the glory to the God of this commission for having delivered me from death. Indeed, I am a chosen generation, and my case is different. May his name be praised forever. Colonel Elizabeth. Let's give Jesus a big, big hand. Please come forward for a testimony. Straight to the point. Once I was blind, now I can see. Your name. Praise God. My name is Divine Ini Obot. I want to thank God for the salvation of my son and that of my family. Yesterday, I got a news from home that my uncle and his entire family were on their way to the hospital to visit their hospitalized son, my cousin. He's suffering from a, a, um, something, but I want to thank God because on their way to the hospital, they were involved in a terrible accident. The entire car was shattered, but there was no loss of life. I just want to give God all the glory for his for filling his covenant in my family because at the beginning of the semester, as instructed by our chaplain, I pray that I will not hear any bad news from whom and God has kept his word. Thank you, Jesus. Be big hand for Jesus, rescued from a ghastly accident via faith in God. Your name, straight to the point. My name is, my name is Jesse Darasimi. I want to thank God for healing. So since Wednesday, I've not been feeling too well, but I prayed about it. And during praise and worship this morning, when I was dancing was when I realized that I'd received my healing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Otari David. I'm here to say thank you, Jesus, for granting me and my, my family and I a place to finally call our own. So a few years back, we had a property, but due to some legal issues, we ended up getting demolished. But I want to thank God that while waiting on the Lord, giving thanks and continually waiting for him in prayer, he has finally given us a place to call our own. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Supernatural provision via the altar of prayer rescued from ghastly accident via faith in God, healed of malaria sickness via the platform of praise. Who is the doer of these great testimonies? Come on, lift up your hands and wave it to him. Give him praise. Praise the Lord. Upon this renewal mountain, it's announcement time. One, praise the Lord, you are welcome to this morning's session of the 2024 Easter Youth Life Conference with the theme, Renewal. It shall be a mountain of encounters for everyone in Jesus' name. Two, good news. AAC 2024 prayer hour continues at 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. All youths are encouraged to use this medium to connect more on the prayer altar for definite renewing encounters at this conference. No one shall return without a testimony in Jesus' mighty name. Three, praise the Lord. The evening session starts at 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Please come with someone for an undeniable encounter. Four, Cove 19 University will launch its open distance e-learning center soon. The National University's Commission, NUC, has licensed Covenant University to run its open and distance e-learning center, starting with BSc Computer Science program. This means that the degree obtained at CCODL is recognized worldwide. Please visit the website and social media platforms on the screen for more information and to get notified when the application opens. Five, good news. 
Dominion Bookstore offers special discounts on books for EAC 2024. All youth are encouraged to take advantage of this opportunity. Six, all youth are encouraged to heartily engage on the ongoing soul-winning prophetic agenda. Remember, this is a covenant platform to take full delivery of our fortune packages this year. Expect to be openly rewarded for your spiritual engagement. Seven, join other youths on Telegram at Winners Youth Live for our online prayer chain, timely updates on YAF Matters, e-book sharing, and online training. Eight, connect with YAF National through our social media handles at Youth Alive Global for YouTube, Facebook, Twitter X, Threads, and Instagram. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. Jesus is Lord. Music Group and Fortula.
voices in my mind that say I'm not enough Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Just the sum of every high and every low Remind me once again just who I am Because I need to know When you are rise on my faith and give Jesus a shout. Come on, come on, come on. If you can this morning, let's jump some more. Let's get excited. Let's get excited. God is doing something this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you see the way they were moving? I felt like doing something. But I advised myself. My conscience told me don't try it. Somebody blessed this morning. Join me, lift up your hands and give thanks to God again. Oh, Father, we just thank you this morning. We just bless your my, holy name. Thank you for who you are to us. Thank you for the blessing of this encounter on this mountain. We give you all the glory and we give you all the praise. Blessed be your holy name. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Well, the most grateful person in church this morning, shout the loudest, amen. amen. Well, good news this morning, good news. Today is Good Friday. That simply means someone here, you receive good news. Your amen is not sounding like a youth this morning. From your home, you receive good news. Someone receive a text message and an email of good news. Christ came to do good. So everything that he died for, everything that he came for, we find full expression in our lives even this season. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. One more time to the glory of God. Let's give him a big, big, big hand. And please be seated. Glory to God. Come on, I said glory to God. We thank God for the great word he brought in the first segment. The word came so powerfully on the force of conscience. The force of conscience. And what a joy again in this second segment. I have the privilege of God, as given by my father, to bring this brief teaching. Captioned, exploring the dominion power of light. Exploring the dominion power of light. Light, light. The core thing we came to this mountain to carry is light. That's the purpose for our gathering. That's the core essence of EAC 2024. For each and every single participant to carry light. And we understand from scriptures... That nothing dominates darkness like light. Nothing dominates darkness. Nothing dispels darkness like light. And that light shines in darkness. And darkness comprehended it not. Darkness cannot understand it. Just as it is in the natural there's never a time you get to your room, for instance, darkness everywhere, you switch on the light, light comes up and darkness refuses to go. No, never. Just as it is in the natural, darkness will always bow at the instance of light. So it is in the spiritual. Every time light appears, darkness disappears. Upon your arrival as a light bearer from this mountain. Every trace of darkness will disappear upon your arrival. You are shouting amen, sounding like a believer. Psalm 74 and verse 20. Psalm 74 and verse 20. Have respect unto the covenant. For the dark places of the earth, the dark places of the earth, are full of the habitation of cruelty. The dark places of the earth full of the habitation of wickedness. When you think of darkness, you think of wickedness. When you think of darkness, you think of evil. Everything associated with darkness is not good. That's why evil sin is done in the dark. Evil is done in the dark. This scripture is simply saying, have respect for the covenant. Why? Because the dark places of the earth has the fullness of the habitation of cruelty. But the good news is this. The battle against the powers of darkness is not new. It has been from the beginning. In fact, if you read scripture, 
at the very beginning of the beginnings, you see darkness. Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to 4. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void at the beginning. And darkness showed up. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. So the battle against the powers of darkness has been from the beginning. So all of the manifestations of darkness, wickedness, we see all kinds of evil. Stealing, lying, killings. All of the manifestations of wickedness and evil has been from the beginning. In the first teaching, the assistant resident pastor referenced Cain and Abel. Blood brothers. Yet one killed the other. Out of jealousy and envy. From the beginning. From the beginning. The works of darkness has been. The confrontation of darkness against light has been from the beginning. There's nothing new about it. Think about household wickedness. The brothers of Joseph. Biological brothers ganging up against their brother to bring him down. The works of wickedness. Think about Daniel. All the other princes, they gathered, they conspired. They were backbiting and planning his downfall. The works of wickedness has been from the beginning. But the good news is this. Light will always dominate darkness. Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 12 and 13. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities. Powers. Rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. No matter where they are. It's not new. But see the emphasis. It says wherefore. Concerning you and I. Take unto you the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. Take the armor of God. Take the armor of light. So you can withstand the evils of the day. Have you ever wondered? That you don't need to invite darkness. Darkness comes on its own. The moment light is off darkness appears. The moment you take away light, automatically, darkness shows up. First John, chapter 5 and verse 19. The scripture says, what we know, we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. The entire world Make no mistake, you run away from Africa, you go to America, there's wickedness there. In, for, in fact, high-tech wickedness. Updated wickedness. You run away to Europe, wickedness is there. In fact, sometimes I think in this part of the world is local wickedness. Local. The whole world lies in wickedness. There's no escape point. The only escape is light. Light. For somebody here, upon your return, you'll become a light bearer. Come on, shout a loud amen if you are there. Now, by redemption, we are now born as children of light. Children of light. Children of light. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 5. 1 Thessalonians 5 5. He said, Ye are all the children of light. And the children of the day, we are not of the night nor of darkness. We have no business with darkness. The moment you become born again, you are a child of God, you are automatically a child of light. A child of the day, darkness is not permitted to molest you. You are ordained to dominate darkness any day, any time. That will be your testimony. But listen to this. Not all light equal light. 
Not all light equal light. Light is in degrees. The greater light, the lesser light. Not all light equal light. That's why we must keep pursuing after more light, more of his word, more light, more of his word. Someone think for an instance, what would be the effect of candlelight in an auditorium like this? The space will consume it. You put a 20 watt bulb, it may have just a very tiny effect. But by the time you begin to put floodlights, 300 watts, 500 watts, the intensity of the light now dominates everywhere. That is why we must keep going after light, after light, consistently, continuously, if we must keep subduing the works of darkness. And that's what we came to this mountain to connect. Your portion will not be lost. I say your portion will not be lost. We are enlightened and illuminated by the word. The word of God. We are enlightened and illuminated by the word of God. Psalm 119 and verse 130. You think of light, you think of the word. You are desperate for light, go for the word. The more worded you are, the more lighted you become. The entrance of thy word, give it what? Light. 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 So for any youth or any believer who desires higher dimensions, higher intensity of light in this dark world, go for the word. The entrance of the word automatically injects light. That's why the adversary will stop at nothing in restricting our access to the word. Have you ever wondered when it's time to dance and to sing and to jump? As a young person, you're active, full of life. When you're on social media, your eyes blazing clear. Nothing. Sharp. You are watching series. Hmm? Episode 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You are fully alert. But the moment you pick this book, mm -hmm. am I saying something here? And you have found that I will read one full chapter now. You start reading. It looks like 10 minutes has gone and you're still on verse 2. All of a sudden, one strange wind begins to blow. Come on, don't behave like you don't know what I'm talking about. Begins to blow. All of a sudden, you begin to see men like trees. All of a sudden, you begin to see the letters like it's Greek. You begin to say to yourself, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. You begin to speak. Ah, surely, goodness, mercy, follow me all the days of my life. And you close the book and you stretch and speak in tongues. There's a fierce contention of hell against our access to this book. Hell will stop at nothing restraining our access to this book. Why? Herein lies the light. And until you and I are lighted, we cannot dispel darkness. By the revelation of the word, now listen to this, we are ordained to rule over our enemies. And I like that. By access and revelation of the word, you and I are ordained to reign over all of our enemies. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. And the song, a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book. Do you see it again? The book. The book. The book. 
and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Verse 10. And has made us unto our God. What? Come on, what does he say there? Shout it louder. Kings and priests. And what will happen? Come on, shout it like it will happen to somebody here. Shout it the loudest as your portion is there. Can, can you personalize it? I shall reign. That will be your portion. So the revelation of God's word empowers us to reign over every opposition of hell. Over all. Over darkness. Over the works of darkness. Over demonic forces. Psalm 1110 from verse 1 to 3. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit down, relax at my right hand. Until I make thine enemy, thy what? Thy footstool. God will make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. He says, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. We are in the days of his power. We are in the days of light. And all of this anchored on the revelation we catch from this book. So the more we see from the word, the more enlightened we become. And the more enlightened we become, the more dominion we execute over darkness. Now, this is why light is the only recognized authority by the powers of darkness. Light is the only recognized authority. Light. The only recognized authority by the powers of darkness. So until you become a carrier of light, darkness will have no respect. And until your light degree increases, certain dimension of darkness will have no respect. I remember many, many years ago, I've shared this at some instances, just picking up in serving God. This is well over a decade ago, many years ago. They brought a young lady to God's servant. And I was privileged to be there. They brought this lady from the United Kingdom. Looked all packaged. Nice, her sister brought her. And then she had explained the situation to God's servant. And God said, now in the name of Jesus, just the mention of the name of Jesus, everything changed. From the voice of a lady, it became masculine. Mm. So at that time, I needed to advise myself. Because things began to change. She began to manifest. Voice was changing, sound. Nya, nya. So I moved behind God's servant for security reasons. And I stayed behind God's servant. He was speaking with authority and he said, even your master, the devil, recognizes his voice. I said, amen. <laughs> I stayed behind him because at such times, things can be flying anyhow. This is many, many years ago. So he was commanding the demons, get up! So I was shouting, amen, from behind. Long story short, the lady was healed. Many years, many, many years after, I was privileged to pastor in one of our churches outside the country. And one of the youths, a young lady, said to me, Pastor, my fiance will be coming to church this Sunday. I want to introduce him to you. I said, fine, bring him. So he came to church. And from where I stood preaching, he looked different. He had this height of a basketballer. Tall, hefty, cute guy. Amen. I know some of you will smile. Cute guy. And then after
after the service, she brought him with so much pride. Pastor, my fiance, I was talking to you about I, I prayed. I said, praise the Lord. Come in. How are you? Then I said, do you mind if we pray? Let me just pray for both of you. She said, yes, yes, yes. And I said, now, Father, in the name of Jesus, all of a sudden, something happened. Manifestation started. All my protocol, security, they closed the office door. Do you understand what I just said? They are supposed to be guiding the pastor. <laughs> shielding the pastor from assault. The moment they saw the young man started manifesting, they just closed the door. So it was me, the lady, and the fiance in the office. To your tent, O Israel. And it began to manifest. But there was no papa to run behind at that time. And the level of light had increased to a certain degree. So I began to speak by the word of the Lord. He began to vomit certain substance. And he vomited. And I turned to look for the fiancé. She was at the extreme end of the office. Arrested by the wall. Like this. Well, I don't know if that relationship continued. <laughs> the only recognized authority in the world of darkness is light. It's light. It's light. Not grammar. Not looks. When the seven sons of Scapha saw Paul display power and authority, he said, we like this. We like the dominion Paul has over the forces of darkness. We like this. We will do like Paul. And unfortunately, they looked for a wrong candidate. And they saw a demon-possessed person. And they carried him. The person and said, we adore you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. We don't know him. We don't carry the light Paul carries. But we like the miracle Paul performs. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we have heard Paul speak it. And what happened? And the evil spirit got angry. You know, demons too can get angry. And they said, Jesus, I know, he's a carrier of light. He's light personified. John chapter 1, from verse 1 to 5. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you seven vagabonds? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them. Over one man against seven well-built men. Overcame them. Prevailed against them. And so that they fled out of the house. How? Naked and wounded. May that not be your testimony. They came to cast out devils. They were casted out. Why? They carried no light. So they had no authority. But upon your leaving this mountain, you are living here enlightened. You become a light bearer from this mountain. As children of God, we must continue to strive to move from revelation to illumination. Levels, levels, degrees. We must continue to strive. And that's why I am excited for every youth in this commission that is partaking of this Easter Youth and Life Conference. Your degree of light must change levels. We have come on this mountain to gain higher command. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 5. First Peter 1 and verse 5. Who are kept? We are kept by the power of God. Through faith unto salvation. Ready to be revealed in the last time. 
Well, in these last days, the difference will be clear between those that truly carry light and those that are speaking grammar. Carriers of light. That's the only force that dominates darkness. Now, as we begin to wrap up this morning, what are the keys to assessing light that empowers for dominion? What are the keys? Keys to assessing light that empowers for dominion. If you need to be empowered for dominion over darkness, what are the keys? Let's run through them very quickly. Number one, be born again. That's foundational. That's foundational. Be born again. Mark chapter 4 verse 11. Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Unto you that are born again, redeemed, saved, is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But to them that are outside, these things make no sense. They are parables. So you want to gain access to the light for dominion. Number one, be born again, genuinely so. Being a member of a church does not equal salvation. Being a member of YAF does not equal salvation. Being a student of Covenant University does not automatically equal salvation. Be genuinely born again. Number two, be spiritually minded. Be spiritually minded. Romans chapter 8 and verse 6. For to be carnally minded, the Bible says, is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Life and peace. Light. Number one, be born again. Number two, be spiritually minded. It takes spiritual mentality to understand instructions from scriptures. Until you possess the mentality of a spiritual personality, you can't understand the things of the spirit. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. It says the natural man, man in his natural estate, man in his carnal estate, receiveth not the things of the spirit of God for their foolishness to him. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually what? Discerned. Number three, be clothed with meekness. Be clothed, wrapped up with meekness. How we need this in this generation. One of the greatest undoing of our generation is the hold of the spirit of pride. Pride. Subtle yet powerful. The spirit of pride. Many can't access all of the blessings of redemption. Why? There's a spirit of pride sitting upon them. Psalm 25 and verse 9. It says, The meek will he guide in judgment, the meek will he teach his ways. So until we become genuinely meek, humble, lowly in heart before God, we cannot assess all of these blessings. We can't assess light. Because light comes from his word. Message is going on. Teaching is going on. Doesn't matter. I know it. I know it. But you know the mystery? Sometimes... When darkness humbles the proud, they now come to their senses. Some years ago, a young man was in service. And then an instruction came to pray. We were praying against evil news, just like the young lady testified. Praying that there must be no negative news or experience in our families. And there was this man that sat down, that stood in front. Others were praying. Ah, God, God, God. He just stood with his hand in his pocket. I was looking at everybody. You know there are people like that in church? You are praying, they just pose like uncles and aunties of God. 
And he paused right in front. Others were praying. On a Sunday morning, praying. We forbid evil by the word of the Lord. No, he just stood there, posing. Long story short, the next morning, he was running to church. When he arrived, they said, what's going on? Pastor, pastor, they just called me. My mother, my mother. And the picture of the proud one that stood in front was painted. But adventure, that word was for him. But the grip of pride made him feel too big to stand before God to avert the evil that was impending. You want to assess light in this kingdom. You want to assess revelation. God will only unveil his secrets to the humble. The meek will he teach his ways. The meek will he guide in judgment. Not the proud. Number four. Be committed to fellowship. Be committed to fellowship. In fellowship, we experience greater access to God's word. We are fed with knowledge. We are fed with understanding. We assess deep things in the place of fellowship. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. It says, not forsaken the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is. You know, I said the book called the Bible is a complete package. It knows humanity more than humanity. He said, don't forsake the assembly of yourselves together as the manner of some. So even the Bible knows that there are many that will say, I'm not going. Fellowship for what? I'm not going. Even if I go, I will not listen to anything. He said, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. You want to assess light? Be committed to fellowship. And I close with this. Number six. Be committed to the study of the word. Be committed to the study of the word. Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. Daniel a carrier of light, a beacon of light. He said, I Daniel, I understood by books. I understood by revelation from the books I studied. From the word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. He says, study to show thyself approved of God. Approved of God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightfully dividing the word of truth. It's my prayer this morning for every single one of us. That the intensity of light that we came into AR 2024 will not be the same level we'll be living from this mountain. Lift up your hands where you are. Father, I receive grace to continue to dwell richly in your word so as to assess the light that comes from it. Lift up your hands. Receive that grace, everyone, this morning. Grace to maintain a lifestyle of studying the word, dwelling richly in the word, assessing light from the word, so as to build my dominion over the works of darkness. Thank you, precious Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Somebody shout a louder, amen. You are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Give Jesus a big, big, big hand. For that lighted word from heaven, put those hands together for Jesus one more time. Ayak 2024. Very shortly in light with that word, we are still going to rise to pray. When we do, we say, Father, by the Holy Ghost, let the light of your word sanctify me holy, spirit, soul, and body upon this mountain of air. Our scriptural text is 1 Thessalonians 5.23. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy, and I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless, 
unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody said to pray, rise this morning and lift up your voice to heaven as we go before the Lord. That Father, by the Holy Ghost, let the light of your word sanctify me holy, spirit, soul, and body. Upon this mountain of Aeac 2024, lift up your voice, make sure you pray. Remember, you need the light uh, to be able to attend to any darkness that confronts us. Uh. Therefore, let's lift up our voice and say, Father, by the Holy Ghost, let the light of your word sanctify me, Holy Spirit, soul, and body upon this mountain of Aeac 2024. I am not returning the same, my spirit, my soul. So my body must come in contact with your word that will sanctify me. The light of your word, the power of your word, the transformation of your word. Father, by the Holy Ghost, let the light of your word sanctify me. Holy Spirit, soul and body upon this mountain of Aeac 2024. I am not permitted to return the same. I am permitted to have an encounter counter that concerns my body, my spirit, my soul. I must return with testimony of total transformation. Lord, by the Holy Ghost, let the light of your word, the light of your word, sanctify me holy. Let the light of your word sanctify me holy in my spirit, my soul, and my body upon this mountain of Aeac 2024, an encounter that I cannot recover from an experience that I will live to testify somebody lift up your voice pray you can do that in the Holy Ghost you can do that in your understanding but by all means make sure there is a connection to connect with light today that father by the Holy Ghost let the light of your word sanctify me holy spirit soul and body upon this mountain of Aeac 2024 Ada Erizala Beketonisha, Ipata Kesito, Maredeta, Elipa Kanita, Ate Kosata, by the Holy Ghost, let the light of your word, let it sanctify me. You don't have to pause, you must connect in prayer. You can do that in the Holy Ghost, you can do that in your understanding. Ate Sakabia, let the word, the light of your word, sanctify me holy in my spirit, in my soul in my body. Now praying the Holy Ghost, giving him thanks uh, because he has heard us. I'm not returning the same. I'm being lighted by the word of God. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Let's receive the Levite as we go into praise. Praise the Lord.
Put your blessed hands together for Jesus and please be seated. AAC 2024, renewer in this service, it is offering time. Say my blessing time. So the blessing will come to you. Amen. Please begin to put together your worship seat that you are brought to honor God in this service. It could either be cash or training electronic media as shown us on the screen. Remember, we are told, today is Good Friday. God will do you good financially. In the name of Jesus Christ. From Luke chapter 6 at verse 38, the Bible says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. Again, I said, today, Good Friday, financially, you shall experience good. In Jesus' name. If you are done putting your seat together, please rise with me on your feet this hour. Lift them up to heaven. Speak a word to that seed. Appreciate God that you are not in his presence with an empty hand. Give him thanks for out of the abundance of what God has given to you and I, we have this to return. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Please keep your seat lifted. Our Father, again this morning, we are grateful to be in your presence with the seed. Accept us as you accept this seed. Cause that this seed will return to us with bountiful food of harvest. 
and let your name be glorified. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Cast your seat as we receive the Levites for their ministration. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. If you know and believe that you have victory in Christ Jesus, shout hallelujah. By his stripes we are healed By his nails his hands were free By his blood we're washed clean Now we have the victory Say the power He's one. 
command their victory over every infirmity, over every delay, over every struggle. Yahweh is more than able. He has given you victory. Hey. For that wonderful ministration, give Jesus a big, big hand of praise. And for all the various ministrations we have received this morning, give Jesus a big, big hand of praise. He's worthy of all the glory. Father, thank you. Lift your hand before the Lord this morning and give thanks unto him for every encounter you have had since you came this morning. The second day is here. He has been reviving us, renewing us transforming us lift your voice lift your hands and glorify god from the depth of your heart appreciate him give him thanks until you thank him for the last you are not qualified for the next so thank him for what he has already done because of what he's said to do again give him thanks give him praise give him thanks give him praise now express your gratitude don't mumble don't mutter words be grateful before the lord every encounter the first word explosive the second word explosive for every encounter that we have received lord we say thank you we don't take your doing for granted blessed be your holy name in the precious name of the lord jesus christ lord jesus this morning we have come before you full of gratitude for your goodness for your mercy for your faithfulness thank you for the blessing of your word that we have received since we came upon this mountain Thank you for diverse ministrations that have come our way. We give you all the praise. This morning, our eyes are fixed upon you. We ask that you will speak to each one of us. By your word today, let every one of our lives be transformed. We thank you because we know you have done it already. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated in his presence. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. We thank God again for the first two sessions of teaching that we received. The first on conscience and the second on the dominion power of light. And I pray that those words will begin to deliver spectacular testimonies in our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. 
This morning in this session, I'll be speaking to us briefly on the subject, Foundation for Genuine Spirituality. Foundation for Genuine Spirituality. Again, our anchor text for this conference is the book of Romans chapter 12. Please, we're going to read it directly from our Bibles. Pick up your Bible right now. And we're going to read it. Take it off the screen. Pick up your Bible. We're going to read it. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Very quickly, get your Bibles and let's go to that scripture as we examine it this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 12. If you are there, say amen. Some of you are just opening it and you are saying amen. If you are there, truthfully say amen. amen. All right. Let's read it together. One to go. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right. Let's read it one more time with more life together. One to go. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus Christ. Foundation for genuine spirituality. It's important to know that the subject of renewal cannot be considered adequately without addressing the foundation of spirituality. Spirituality remains the foundational requirement for anyone to have an effective walk with God. This is why the word of God declares that he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to his spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 and verse 8. Our spiritual investment determines the ultimate outcome of anyone's adventure on the earth. The word of God declares also that the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit of God. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. So it is impossible for any individual to have a productive walk with God without addressing the foundation of of spirituality quickly this morning what is spirituality we look at three descriptions of spirituality number one spirituality is a delightsome pursuit of God it is a delightsome pursuit of God Psalm chapter 112 and verse 1 in particular it said blessed is the man that fears the Lord that delighted greatly in his commandment that's the description of a spiritual man. A man, a woman, a boy or girl that delights in the commandment of God. Somebody who is delightsome in their pursuit of God. In Psalm chapter 63, verse 1 and then verse 8. The Bible says, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Verse 8. The Bible says, my soul followeth hard after thee, and thy right hand upholdeth me. That's the description of a spiritual person. A spiritual person is one who delights in the pursuit of God. One who is excited in seeking after God. One who is continuously, you know, continuously delighted at everything that has to do with God. That's a spiritual person. So a spiritual person is usually delightsome in their pursuit of God. Number two, a spiritual person is undying in their crave to please God. So spirituality is an undying crave to please God. An undying crave to please God. In the book of Acts chapter 24 and verse 16, Paul the apostle testifying said it this way. He said, and herein do I exercise myself. To have always a conscience that is void of offense towards God and towards man. That is, I am continuously seeking to ensure that I don't offend God. That's a spiritual person. A spiritual person is one who is continuously craving to please God. 
craving to please God. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and verse 8. The Bible puts it to us this way. It said, but refuse profane and old wise fables, but exercise thyself rather unto godliness. The word godliness has to do with pleasing God, being like God, God-likeness, God-conformity. It said, exercise yourself in unto godliness. For from bodily exercise, profit at little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Having the promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. So from scripture we discover that when we talk about spirituality, we are talking about an undying crave, an undying crave to please God. John chapter 8 and verse 29, Jesus speaking, put it this way. He said, he that sent me is with me. My father has not left me alone because I do always the things that please him. So if I ask myself, am I a spiritual person? It means I must ask myself, do I delight in pursuing after God? I must ask myself, do I, do I, do I ensure that my life is about pleasing God? Is pleasing God my priority? Number three description that we look at concerning a spiritual man is spirituality is living under the dictates of scriptures. In fact, God's servant, Bishop David Oepo, put it this way. He said that spirituality is simply scripturality. Being conformed to the word of God. And that goes back to our anchor scripture for this conference. He said, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may be able to prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So from scriptures, we discover that when we talk about spirituality, it is living according to the dictates of scriptures. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word. Living by the word of God is what we call spirituality. Now, what are some of the characteristics of a genuinely spiritual person. And I'll give us five characteristics this morning and then we are going to pray and we're going to ask God to engrace us for every one of these characteristics to be reflected in our lives. Number one, spirituality demands genuine love for God. Any truly or genuinely spiritual person is a person that is in love with God. It demands genuine love for God. In Matthew chapter 22, somebody asked Jesus a question. And from verse 36 down to verse 40, Jesus responded to the question. He said, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And the Bible tells us that Jesus responded and said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. He said, this is the first and great commandment. The second is like, love your neighbor as yourself he said upon these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets now listen carefully to me this morning the greatest motivator for genuine spirituality is affection the greatest motivator for genuine spirituality is affection listen to me this morning and listen very carefully God is not a means to an end God is both the means and the end. God is not a means to an end. God is both the means and the end. We must come to the point where we recognize that we don't use God to get things. No. We use all that we have to pursue after God. God must be the object of our affection. Genuine spirituality is motivated by a genuine affection for God. A deep-seated love for God. A heart that burns after him. A heart that pants after him. David put it this way in the book of Psalm chapter 42 and verse 1 and 2. He put it this way. As the heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. He said, he said in verse 2, my soul tested for God, for the living God. When shall I appear before God? That talks about a person who is hungry, who is thirsty, a person who is desperate with affection for God. No wonder the Bible called him a man after my own heart. First Samuel chapter 13 and verse 14. 
He said, the Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. So spirituality demands a genuine love for God. A genuine love for God. So many people are consumed with what God can do more than who God is. They want God so they can get miracles. They want God so they can get breakthroughs. They want God so they can get open doors. They want God so they can get favor. They want God so they can get lifting. Now listen to me today. If you want to use God, you will end up disappointed. But if you want to love God, you will end up, you will end up decorated. If you want to use God, you will end up disappointed. But if you want to love God, then you end up decorated. Please hear this and hear it very well. If you want to make the most of your adventure in this kingdom, the fundamental requirement is that you must have love as your motivation. What is your motive? What is your motive? What is your motive? You find people when they are looking for children, they are running after God. When they are looking for jobs, they are running after God. When they are looking for marriage, they are running after God. When they are looking for prosperity, they are running after God. But when those things are gotten, they forget God. Listen to me and listen to me very carefully. The best of your adventure with God can only be attained when the motivation of affection is in place. The motivation of affection. So we must get into the deep recesses of our hearts and inspect our motive. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 5, it says, let us examine ourselves. Let us examine ourselves. There is what the Bible refers to as unfeigned love. That is uncorrupted love. Some people's passion and pursuit of God is simply because of what they want. But God is looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Whose sincerity is demonstrated in the unfeigned dimension of the love that they express towards him. My prayer this morning for every single one of us is that via the encounter we are having today, our love for God will be stirred up afresh in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say loud, amen. Number two, number two, and this is very important. Number two characteristic of, genu of a genuinely spiritual person is a genuine passion for the word. A genuine passion for the word. A genuine passion for the word. Look at the words that David used to describe the word of God in Psalm chapter 119 verse 97 to 100. He said, oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day long. He said, Thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. He said, I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. In verse 162, David again speaking about his passion and love for the word of God. Look at this. Verse 162, Psalm 119, verse 162. David also put it there. He said, I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. I rejoice at thy word. When it comes to a spiritual person, there is a genuine passion for the word. There is a, 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 an addiction, a dedication for the word. They are daily waiting to hear from God. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 34. Proverbs 8 and verse 34. The Bible said, Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gate, waiting at the post of my doors. Blessed is the man that heareth me, the one who will wait to receive a word from me daily. Listen to me. One of the vital necessities of a spiritual life is creating the discipline of maintaining daily access to the word of God. We saw it earlier, Matthew 4 verse 4 said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Create a discipline of having a devotional life. Getting access to the word of God on a daily basis. Listen to me. Don't start the day without starting with his word. Don't begin the day without starting with his word. Hearing from God first will settle the rest of the day. So many of us are consumed by so many things. And that has kept many of us stranded in our walk with God. If you want to enjoy the best of God, make sure that you settle down with his word. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. 
Now listen to me. We heard it in the, in the second teaching. If you are going to have dominion in this adventure, you will need the light of the word. And to have the light of the word, you must settle down with the word. You must settle down. You don't know the confrontations and battles you are going to be met with in the adventure of life. And you discover that it's the weapons you have built inside of you that give you access to dominate in the adventure of life. Listen to me. The word of God is the greatest weapon that you and I can have in making the most of our adventure on the earth. Every department of your life can be settled by the word of God when you settle with it. Settle down with God's word and you will settle your destiny. Settle down with God's word and you will settle your destiny. Settle down. God, someone was saying yesterday, very powerfully in our midst here, he was telling us, he said, look, revelation is greater than vision. It's more potent, it's more powerful. You don't know what you'll be confronted with, but if you have revelation, you are able to dominate the various contentions of life. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's so important and it's so vital. I remember when I was to get married and I had met my wife and one day my wife came to meet me. We are in courtship then and she came and said, well, there's something I need to tell you. I said, what's it? And she said, well, as a little girl, she went to the hospital and she was diagnosed with a condition and she was told that she's not likely to have children. I said, that's not a problem. We have children too. One boy, one girl. She thought I didn't understand what she was saying. So she brought it up again. They told me this. I said, that's not a problem. We have two, a boy, a girl. That's what I know. And why do I know that? Because the word of God is clear. He said, there shall not one be barren among you, male or female. The doctor told you that, but the one who created doc the doctor told us this. There shall not be one, male or female, barren among you. You see, if you are not settled with the word of God, you will have yourself confronted and defeated in the battles of life. In fact, the truth is the devil will confuse you when you are not settled in God's word. The devil will confuse you. And that's why it becomes important for us to learn to build ourselves up. I make it a practice in my life every single day. The first thing I receive, the first thing I read, not a text message, not a phone call, not anything else, but first of all, is the word of God. I must drink it in because it has been the greatest advantage in my adventure. It has been what has settled me from every form of confusion. I remember before I got married, an elderly woman came to me, very spiritual looking. And she said to me, I need to talk to you. I said, what is it? She said, listen, um, I know that there is somebody that you are supposed to, you, you, you want to get married to. But the Lord has said to me that you are not to marry that person. That this other person is the one who you are to marry. And she looked at me and said, you know, the Bible says that, you know, the Lord will do nothing until he reveals it unto his servants, the prophet. When she finished talking, I said, sit down, ma. She sat down. I said, listen, what you are saying is 100% anti-scriptural. Because the Bible says, he that findeth a wife, not he they find a wife for, has found a good thing. Is somebody getting it now? If you are not settled with God's word, people will confuse you in the journey of life. Somebody will look at you, jump up and down, jump up and down, jump up and down and say, look, you are supposed to go into fishing business. What do you know about water? <laughs> now listen to me. It is important for us to understand that the word of God must become our obsession. It must become our addiction. If you are not settled with the word, you will become unsettled in the journey of life. So sit down with the word. Sit down. Settle down with the word so that you don't become a victim in the adventure of life. Listen, if you don't know the word of God in and out, the devil will confuse you. You know, even when Satan came to Jesus, what was he quoting? The Bible. Matthew chapter 4, read it very well. He began to quote the scriptures. He was giving Jesus various scriptures, trying to bring confusion. But because Jesus was the word in motion, he was able to arrest the confusion by the instrumentality of the word. I see grace coming upon each one of us afresh for a unique hunger and thirst for the word of God. 
Somebody believe it, say loud amen. amen. I said, somebody believe it, say loud amen. amen. Somebody believe it, say the loudest amen. amen. So settle down with the word. Settle down with the word. It will give you the necessary impetus to, de to defeat the various confrontations of life. Settle down with the word. I want to advise and admonish every one of us, draw a program for yourself. Every single day, I'm reading a chapter of the Bible. Define how you want to go through it. In fact, as young people, every year you should go through the Bible. We have a Bible reading plan for the youth. You can take advantage of that and go through the Bible on a year-to-year -year basis. Not just to say, I have finished the Bible. No. To ensure that the Bible furnishes your life. You don't finish the Bible. The Bible furnishes you. That's the scriptures. It is there to decorate you. So commit yourself to going through the scriptures on a daily basis for the purpose of feeding your spirit man. The Bible says as newborn babes, it said desire the sincere milk of the word of God that you may grow thereby. You can't grow without the word. And if you don't grow, you will groan in the journey of life. So we must commit ourselves to addiction to the word of God so that we can become triumphant in the journey of life. Number, number three, is spirituality demands a commitment to a life of prayer. It demands a commitment to a life of prayer. A commitment to a life of prayer. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6, it says that when you pray, enter into your closet. And when you have shut the door, pray to your father that is in secret. And your father that seeth in secret will reward you openly. Now listen to this very carefully. Every believer is expected to cultivate a private or secret prayer life. A private or secret prayer life. That is, we are to ensure that prayer is our lifestyle. There are so many people that all they do is to come to do public gymnastics, but they won't pray in the private. God said, go into your closet and cultivate a private prayer life. Those who settle with God in the secret are settled by God in the open. So settle with God in the secret. Every single day, create time where you are spending with God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9 shows us that we are ordained by God for fellowship. He said, God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son. So we are created for fellowship, for interaction, for communion with God. That's why we are told in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 to pray without ceasing. Every single day, spend time praying. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Praying continuously, praying consistently is what helps us to remain standing and agile in our spiritual walk. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So my charge to us therefore is cultivate a prayer life. When you wake up in the morning, let the first thing that you begin to consider be the altar of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the blessing of the day. Thank you for the blessing of the day. You go into the world and then you begin to engage your spirit man in praying, particularly in the spirit. You are baptizing the Holy Ghost. What an advantage. Just wake up in the morning and begin to saturate the atmosphere as you pray in the Holy Ghost. What are you doing? You are saturating your atmosphere and building up yourself. Jude verse 20 said, building up yourself, praying in the Holy Ghost. So as we pray in the, spirit, in the Spirit, we are building our spirit man up. Cultivate it as a lifestyle. When you get around God's servant, Bishop Oedipo, you will discover one of the continuous things you see with him is continuous prayer. He's praying in the Spirit. He's discussing with you, then he switches to the Spirit. After switching to the Spirit, he continues the discussion. He then switches to the Spirit. Engaging with, in fellowship with God consistently. We must build it up now. Listen, the prayer life you don't build in your youth, you will not have in your old age. We must cultivate that habit now. And this is so important because no matter how busy life is, 
it must never be allowed to saturate your spiritual engagement. I love the story I heard about Martin Luther. They asked him about his plans for the day. And he looked at the person who asked him and said, Oh, I have so much to do today that I must spend the first three hours in private prayer. I have so much. You can never get too busy to pray. Prayer must become a lifestyle for every believer. A lifestyle for every believer. Every single day, engage yourself on the altar of prayer. Make sure no day passes without you logging time in prayer. This is so important. Now, the truth is we live in a day now where people completely lack a devotional life. Most people are just full of activity. And that's why the devil is taking advantage of so many people. You know, Jesus said to Peter, he said, look, <laughs> you should watch and pray or else you will fall into temptation. You watch and pray or else you fall into the temptation. Watch and pray so that you don't enter into any kind of temptation. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. There are things you will blindly enter if you are not prayerful. There are traps you will blindly enter if you are not prayerful. Prayer is one of the weapons that keeps you and I agile in defeating every plot of the wicked. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It keeps you and I agile in defeating every plot of the wicked. That is one of the advantages of prayer. I pray this morning that for each one of us, a fresh release of the prayer grace will come afresh upon our lives. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say loud, amen. Somebody believe, say the loudest, amen. Number four, spirituality demands taking responsibility for one's personal sanctification. Personal sanctification. It demands taking responsibility for one's personal sanctification. That's the characteristic of a spiritual man. So a spiritual man is not one who allows himself to be encumbered by the traps of sin. They are consistently committed to living a sanctified life. Second Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 12. Look at what the Bible tells us here. It says, for our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you, Lord. This is our testimony. Our testimony is this. Our own conscience manifesting in the fact that we are not living lives that are contrary to the things that we are saying. Please hear this and hear it very well. As a believer, your greatest testimony is the sanctity of your lifestyle. Your greatest testimony is the sanctity of your lifestyle. If you lie like the world, steal like the world, fornicate like the world, cheat like the world, then how can you, not, how can you claim not to be the world? The Bible makes us understand that our lives are expected to be living epistles. That is, we are the picture of exactly what the word of God says. That is what our lives should exhibit. And that is why a spiritual man is one who takes responsibility for his or her own personal sanctification. Second Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. The Bible tells us, it said, Now, having therefore these precious promises, dearly, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves of all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So a spiritual person is one who is continuously cleansing, who maintains a life of sanctification, who maintains a life of holiness. This is so important, particularly in our days, where there's so much going on in the world. People are being taught that you can do anything. God does not mind. Jesus has paid the price. So you can live anyhow. Please hear this. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. First John chapter 3 and verse 7. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. 
Let's look at this scripture very closely, quickly. It said, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he's righteous. Now look at verse 8. Verse 8. He that committed sin is what? Come on, talk to me. So, what? Say louder, is what? He that doeth righteousness is righteous. He that committed sin is from the devil, for this devil sinner from the beginning. For this purpose did the Son of God come, or was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So the purpose for Jesus coming is for sin to lose dominion over you. It's for sin to lose dominion over you. So we must come to the point where we recognize that it is our responsibility. If you allow yourself to remain captive to sin, it is because you refuse to take responsibility. Paul says something in 1 Corinthians 9, 27. He said, I put my body under and I bring it into subjection. Bring your body under subjection. Bring your body under subjection. In Romans 8, 13, it says that we are to mortify the deeds of the body. So you bring your body under subjection. Finally, number five is a commitment to keeping godly association. A commitment to keeping godly association. Psalm chapter 1 and verse 1. The Bible said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the godly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. Who you walk with determines where you walk to. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. The Bible said, Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. We must come to the point of taking definite decisions about the relationships that we maintain. Definite decisions. I've shared this experience some years ago. I was driving to the house of a friend of mine. And on my way driving this while I was in university, I was driving to his house. On my way driving, I got my first speeding ticket. Some other time I was driving again to his house and I entered my first accident. Ghastly accident. I was at a stoplight and an 18 wheeler trailer was coming full speed and the brake failed. And this trailer hit my vehicle from the back. The car ended on the other side of the road. The boot was literally inside the back seat. That's how hard the impact was. I came out of that vehicle knowing that I was just face to face with death. I asked myself a question. This friend, let me examine all the things around. What is profitable about this relationship? I checked, I discovered it was a relationship pulling me back from God. I said, ticket, accident, what next? There's no need to find out to know. I cut it off on the spot. Is somebody getting in? Some years ago, I met a man as a minister, also a minister. And we sat down and we met together and had, you know, a little discussion. And we went to somewhere and had some breakfast together. And right after I left that meeting, even my physical body was reacting. My physical body was reacting. My, my entire system was reacting. And as soon as I left that meeting and got back home, I prayed a prayer. I said, Lord, may I never meet him again. It was a relationship that will contaminate my spirit man. That was in 2008. We have never met and we'll never meet again. Is somebody getting it? Guard your life. You have only one life. Guard your life. You have only one life. Friends that will say things to you that are contrary to where you stand in Christ, guard against them. Don't let anyone's friendship bring you into contention with God. Guard your life. This is so vital and so critical. One of the greatest destroyers of great destinies is wrong association. One of the greatest destroyers. It has been said, show me your friends and I will tell you who you are. If you don't want to look like your association, change your association. If you don't want to look like your association, change your association. In fact, listen to this. Your association is a description of your aspiration. It's a description 
of your aspiration. When we're in school, there are people we call NFA. No future ambition. The person is living a life that is clear. He's not going anywhere. You stay with him. Guess what? You are not going anywhere. Watch your association. These five fundamentals are necessary to cultivating a spiritual life. Stand on your feet with me this morning. Lord, give me grace. For these five things, to develop my love for you, give me grace. To develop my passion for your word, give me grace. To develop a life of prayer, give me grace. To develop a life of sanctification, give me grace. To cultivate right association, give me grace. Lift your voice and pray that prayer from the depth of your heart this morning. Lord, give unto me grace. Give unto me grace. Give unto me grace. Pray from the depth of your heart. Give unto me grace. Give unto me grace. Grace, O oh Lord. Grace, O oh Lord. To develop a deep affection for you. Deep-seated love for you. Let grace come upon my life for it. 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 Lord, give unto me grace. Grace to develop an appetite for your word. To be consumed by your word. To be addicted to your word. To be committed to your word. Give me grace, O oh Lord, this morning. The grace required to be addicted to a life of prayer. I don't want my prayer fire to keep going down. Many times I find myself on fire and I lose it. I don't want that anymore. Give me grace to keep my prayer fire. I thought somebody was praying this morning with a sense of desperation. Your desperation determines your visitation. Give me grace, oh God. 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 Give me the grace, Lord. Give me the grace, Lord. Give me the grace, Lord. Give me the grace, Lord, to have right association, to develop a life of sanctification. I don't want to keep rising and falling into sin again. I want to stand. I want to stand in purity. I want to stand in holiness. I want to stand in sanctity. In the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for it. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, lift up your hands before the Lord right now. Now in the name of Jesus, I decree this morning, the release of fresh grace upon everyone here. Amen. The grace to love God more than ever before. Amen. That grace comes upon your life afresh. Amen. Everything contending with God's place in your heart. I declare those things dethroned today. Amen. Every pollutant, contaminant against your spiritual work. I declare them destroyed today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. From now, a new appetite for God's word comes alive in you. Amen. A new passion for the altar of prayer comes alive in you. Amen. From now, no more corruption. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. There is a dramatic change of level for you today. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Now listen carefully. For everyone here, draw a program for yourself. A spiritual program for yourself. What is my prayer program? What is my study program? You have certain contacts on your phone that must be deleted. That must be blocked. You block them off. You take certain decisions from today. No more. This thing, no more. That thing, no more. Don't let this season just be a season of writing notes. Write decisions. What decisions am I taking? Great meetings don't make great people. Great decisions make them. So take decisions. What you decide today decides your tomorrow. My prayer is that no one here will miss their great future. Amen. Be blessed of the Lord. This is your best season yet. Amen. Begin to enjoy unusual testimonies. Amen. Upon this mountain, before you depart, there will be unusual testimonies in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hand to heaven, give thanks to God and appreciate him as worthy. Lift up your hands. Let's appreciate God again this morning. 
Let's magnify his name for the diverse visitations we have received. In this morning's segment, I appreciate him. Glorify his name. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. We give you all the glory and we give you all the praise. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you and thank you and thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Someone truly grateful is shouting it louder. Amen. For all of the diverse word encounters we had in this first segment, let's give Jesus a big, 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 big hand of praise. Amen. Well, as we get ready to shut down in this morning's segment, be reminded that the midday prayer uh, holds from 12 to 1.30 p.m. And for Covenant University, is holding at the University Chapel, while over here in Canaan land, we'll be having it at the Youth Chapel. The Youth Chapel and Covenant University Chapel at the time again, 12 to 1.30 p.m. And also note that the evening session kicks off at 4 p.m. And tonight will be the last evening session for EAC 2024. So you don't, you can't afford to miss tonight's session. It shall be a great time in God's presence. Also take advantage of the discounts on the books being sold at the Dominion Bookstore. It shall be a great blessing to each one of us. Now hold hands together as we share the goodness in fellowship. Let's hold hands one, two, go. Surely, God's goodness and his mercy shall follow us. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. EAC 2024. Renewal. God bless you. Shake hands with two or three people. God bless you. God bless you. See you.